Buongiorno, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi faccio un video sul film che si chiama Solo cose belle. Questo è un film italiano, in italiano, um, e invece di parlare um, a profondo del film, um, vedremo invece uh, un brano <ride> di una recensione che ho trovato su movie um, movieplayer.it ok e nel brano che, che ho adattato un po' um, ho trovato quest, questi aggettivi e questi aggettivi vediamo e uh, studiamo insieme oggi ok so let's have a, a little recap in english so um Hi everyone, ciao. My name is Charlotte and if you're watching this, watching me for the first time, today I'll be looking at a part, a little excerpt from a movie review, a film review that I found from movieplayer.it and the film is called Solo Cose Belle. Okay, there's a movie poster. I watched this film recently and l'ho guardato due o tre settimane fa e mi è molto piaciuto so I really liked it um, I watch a lot of films um, so you know they're not necessarily all singing or dancing um, but I do I, I do like this one and it is currently available on Netflix at least it is available to UK residents so I would advise going to watch that if you're interested in seeing something Italian and um hearing some uh, you know real Italian but what we're looking at today is an excerpt of um, a, a film review which is actually quite a long article a lot quite a long piece of text um, you can go to this link here at the top of this month's handout or if you're not a club member you can find the link to the original full unabridged unedited um, review at the link that I'll post in the video description. So I like to concentrate sometimes on one element of language. We've got two things to concentrate on here today. I'll read out this quite short little excerpt um, of the movie review, the film review, and um, as well as sort of translating it, understanding the meaning, we'll be looking at adjectives because there's a nice little list of them here. Adjectives are descriptive words used to describe people or situations or things, objects, that kind of thing. So, quite useful. With that in mind, let's start. I'm going to read this out. I won't write the whole thing, but you can read it um, at the link underneath. Or if you're a club member, just have a look at your hand as I go along. Okay, andiamo. Benedetta, sedicenne figlia dal sindaco di un piccolo centro dell'entroterra roman romagnolo scusa, è una stravagante e chiassosa casa famiglia appena arrivata in paese sconvolgendone gli equilibri so, Benedetta sedicenne figlia del sindaco so, 16 year old daughter, figlia is daughter del sindaco il sindaco is um, the mayor di un piccolo centro of a small town if you like del entroterra romagnolo of Romagna is like a, a little region in the north of Italy like Emilia Roman, Romagna Romagnolo is one of the adjectives it means of that region okay from Romagna Entroterra is like the back, back of beyond, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so Benedetta is a 16-year-old figlia del sindaco, daughter of the mayor of a small back of beyond Rom uh, Romagna uh, town, settlement. And, so that's one party in the film's plot, and una stravagante e chiassosa casa familia and a stravagante looks like it means extravagant but here it means like odd or weird 
e chiassosa, like that means kind of noisy or rowdy or loud, casa familia. So casa familia, in English we would say like a foster family, a foster home, okay, a home where people go to be looked after, cared for, as if they're part of the family, but they may not be like a natural um, part of the family. So, um, and so, and this odd and kind of loud <laughs> foster home, who have just arrived, appena arrivata, so appena arrivata agrees in gender and number with casa familia, okay, so foster family, who have just arrived in paese, in the, in the, in the village, sconvolgendone gli equilibri, shaking up the, how would I translate that? Shaking up the ah, upsetting its balance. There you go, upset. Sconvolgere, sconvolgere. Yeah, is to like upset. It's literally to upset the balance. Sconvolgere, sconvolgere. Si, to mess up or disturb. That's a good one. But we would say literally in English, upset the balance of something. Um, li equilibri is the balances. Quel bizarro microcosmo di tipi umani. This or that. Quel means that. Bizarro. Bizarre, strange. Microcosmo. Microcosm. Di tipi umani of human beings. Che conta, which includes. Contare is to count, but it can mean to be made up of. Due genitori, two, pen, uh, two parents. Un rifugiato nigeriano. So a Nigerian refugee. Una ex prostituta, an ex prostitute. Sorry, you can hear my baby cry. She's been looked after in the other room, but she's very like um, fretful at the moment, so hopefully that will finish. If it doesn't, I'll restart. So the casa familia, the foster family, is made up of due genitori, two parents, uh, un rifugiato nigeriano, a Nigerian refugee, male, uh, nigeriano not, yeah, nigeriano okay, male it's got the O at the end ex prostituta e sua figlia appena nata appena nata so uh, an ex prostitute and her daughter new, just born or newly born appena nata, nato means just born i.e. newborn, newly born. Um, un ex detenuto appena adolescente. So, detenuto. Now, how would I translate that? That's someone who's basically been in you know, like prison or something. Uh, ah, ex convict. There you go. Um, or someone who's been detained. Can't really think of another way of uh, translating that. But someone who's been in like a detention centre of some kind. Um, so. Uh, kind of criminal, if you like. Um, where were we? So, two parents, a Nigerian refugee, an ex-prostitute and her new newborn daughter, an ex-detention like, centre, ex-criminal kind of thing, who's like also an adolescent or just out of adolescence. Due ragazzi disabili, two disabled boys, I think they are, kids, e un figlio naturale, and a, like, their natural son. So all of those make up la casa familiare. Dovrà fare i conti con una comunità che non sembra minimamente aperta al dialogo. So all of those people make up um, the home, and uh, they'll have to basically deal with the local community. Che non sembra, which doesn't seem, Minimamente, so that's like in the least, not in the least. Aperta, that means open. So that can mean like a door or something physically shut or like, sorry, physically open. Or it can mean like mentally open. So um, so they have to deal with a community, una comunità che non sembra minimamente aperta al dialogo. So open to dialogue, okay? Open to dialogue, just like in English. So here's the last um, paragraph. Toccherà alla storia d'amore tra la giovane protagonista e Kevin 
uno dei ragazzi della casa, guidare il pubblico in un viaggio alla scoperta della bellezza, scusa, della bellezza dell'altro nel tempo della diffidenza, Amen. Um, del disumano e delle elezioni combattute a colpi di scomberi. Now, there's a few little ellipses in, ellipses in there. Ellipses. <laughs> ellipses, I think. Dot, dot, dots. Puntini kind of things. Where I've taken some stuff out. Okay? But it should more or less make sense. So, um, toccherà a. Toccare a means it's up to someone. It's, it's upon their heads. Okay? It's up to you to do something. So it will be up to la storia d'amore, the love story, tra la giovane protagonista, la giovane. Giovane means young. It's one of these adjectives that ends with an E in the singular. Okay, so la giovane means the young, whatever, female, something or other. Protagonista is the protagonist, so the main person in the story. And if you remember, lei si chiama Benedetta so toccherà toccherà alla storia d'amore it will be up to the, the love story between the young protagonist and Kevin uh, he's the ex il ex detenuto so the kind of ex-convict if you like detainee he's been in a detention centre can't really think what the word would be for that even in English so it's up to them um Guidare il pubblico, to guide the public, um, the audience, sorry. In un viaggio, like on a journey, alla scoperta della bellezza dell'altro. Okay, so um, it's up to the love story between Kevin and Benedetta to guide the audience um, towards the discovery of beauty, the beauty of otherness, if you like. Nel tempo della diffidenza, in a time of mistrust, right? So we've got a community, a local community, which is very mistrusting of this foster family. Like, there's a lot, there's a weird mishmash of people all together. They're quite loud. And Benedetta, her father's the mayor, and he has his image to live up to. Um, and then he finds out that Benedetta is getting involved with this foster family and with the young ex-convict boy and they've got a love story and anyway and he's trying to win elections you know to kind of keep up appearances so and uh, the last bit is del disumano of the inhuman and of elections uh, e delle elezioni combattute a colpi di scomberi so uh, let's translate that so you have to navigate it's up to the love story between these two the protagonist and Kevin, who's one of like their foster family, to guide the public um, on a journey towards the discovery of beauty, the beauty in otherness. At a time of mistrust, the inhuman, or inhumane, if you like, and a time of elections fought with colpi di scomberi. Now, the word describes this I think is evictions right so the mayor is willing to evict the family uh, la casa familia because they're loud and they're sort of disturbing the community the peace you know that kind of thing but uh, in the end uh, that isn't necessarily what happens so I would say go and watch this film it's an interesting one um, so let's have a look at some of these um, adjectives that we saw Sedicene. Sedicene means 16 year old. Right? 16 year old boy or girl. Piccolo. So we had um, in un piccolo centro, in a small town basically. Piccolo, piccola. That's a nice regular adjective, small. Romagnolo, Romagnola means of Romagna, okay? Of the area in. Uh, northern Italy, that's called Romagna. And una stravagante, that means odd or strange or a bit weird. Uh, Chia sosa, that means um, rowdy or loud. Nigeriano, well, it's Nigerian, that looks almost the same. Nigeriana, 
if it's a female Nigerian, um, or a noun that's... So Nigeriano can describe any noun. It doesn't have to be a man or a woman, not even a living thing. It could be a Nigerian boat <laughs> or a Nigerian car, right? Bizarro. So there's two Zs in there. That's a double Z, like pizza. Bizarro. Okay. Strange, bizarre, weird again. Appena nata here has an A at the end because it's talking about una figlia appena nata, newly born daughter. Come la mia, <laughs> like mine. But if it was a boy, appena nato. Appena means like just, like only recently, like just born. Uh, adolescente. That means adolescent and or teenager, right? The same thing, basically. Adolescente. It's one of the ones with an E at the end. So in it can be used for a boy that's adolescent or a girl that's adolescent. Uh, the last one here we've got is on this list, sorry. Oh, it's on a due. <laughs> Naturale. So that's another one that's very common. Uh, naturale means natural, okay? So it, in the plural, it would be naturali. So anything that's got an E at the end, that's a, an adjective in the singular, with an E at the end, and the singular becomes an I in the plural. Okay? Li adolescenti. That's actually nouns. Adolescents. Uh, naturale. Naturali. Disabile is disabled or my handicapped. Disabili in the text refers to two disabled um, ragazzi disabili, two disabled boys. Now over here we've got a couple of others that we mentioned. We had aperta. What does aperta? Ah, so aperta is open. It's a feminine singular noun. Uh, feminine singular adjective was after me um, and it ends with an A in this text because it is describing che cosa? una comunità oh no scusa uh, mm, mm, sì una comunità che non sembra minimamente aperta al dialogo so it's describing a community like the community where they live una comunità che non è aperta al dialogo which is not open. So even if it's in the negative, it is not open. It is not big. It's not old. It's not odd, noisy, romagnola, whatever. Obviously, the adjective stays the same whether it's negative or not. È aperta la comunità. È aperta al dialogo. La comunità non è aperta al dialogo. The point is aperta. <laughs> Qui, uh, that is in the feminine singular form. So, like, aperta, aperto. When you look up adjectives in a dictionary, they tend to be in their singular masculine form. Okay, so they'll generally have an O at the end, as most singular masculine adjectives do but they might have an e at the end like naturale so that in that case it'll be the same singular form for masculine and feminine uh, nouns then the last one we have giovane 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 si giovane e giovane young okay la giovinezza reminds me of another film. Anyway, so we've got quite a few nice little adjectives there. Most of them end in uh, an O or an A, and if they don't, they'll end in an E in the singular. They might have um, a, 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 an I at the end if it's in the plural. If we were talking about um, hmm, newborns or newly born children, plural, then it might be a penanati or a penanate depending on the gender of the child, uh, children. So, um, there we go. Now, let's have a look at a couple of the words which I thought we might check your comprehension on, okay? 
Um, these are quite high register words, I thought, or f phrases. So I'll do, we've got a little bit of time. Okay, so, alla scoperta di. That's like an adjectival phrase, I guess. No, alla scoperta di. A prepositional phrase. It's got a preposition combined with a, an article, alla. Scoperta is discovery. And then di is a preposition. So we've got prepositions and nouns in an article all mixed together. So that is, um, that means, what's the context here? Towards the discovery of. The discovery of, um, let's see what we'll find. If I type in Alaska Perto di into uh, word reference at the discovery of, right? Literally, word for word, is the same. Um, so let's have a look where that is here. <laughs> so it's up to the story of the young protagonist and Kevin to guide the public in a journey. Okay, so here, a la scoperta di is actually towards the discovery of. So a, the, the preposition a, can sometimes mean to, or it can sometimes mean at. So here it's more similar to, to towards, okay? As if there's a trajectory of going somewhere, there's a sense of mo movement. What's the next thing? The next little phrase. So rather than an adjective, let's go for, ah, here's one. Casa familia. Que significa? Foster family. Okay, that's what we call it. And then what's the next one? Uh, sedicene. Sedicene, that's an adjective. 16 years old. Yeah, 16 year old girl or boy. And then let's go for um, ah yeah, toccare a. So tocca a te fare qualcosa. Tocca a te guidare il pubblico in un viaggio alla scoperta della bellezza dell'altro. So it's up to you. It's uh, up to someone. So you can either you can also say it's your turn. It's the turn of someone. So tocca a te means it's your turn. It's your go. But in this last quite long sentence, toccherà alla storia d'amore tra la giovane protagonista e Kevin. It's up to the love story of the young protagonist and Kevin to take the public or the audience um, through the through the journey or whatever. So to toccare a means it's up to someone. So that's like an idiomatic phrase there. Quite a nice one. So, if you want to watch that film, you can find it on Netflix. I'm sure you might be able to find it elsewhere, but that's where I watched it. You can watch the trailer by clicking on the link. Um, well, you just have a look on YouTube, you'll find that. But you can click on the link in my handout for, for this, um, this month's club. Um, and you'll be able to see that, see whether it's of interest to you. But you can also find the whole article with the, um, the review that hasn't been adapted. It's quite long like four times longer than this tiny section here at that link there okay so i hope that's been useful for you and i hope that that's inspired you to maybe go and watch some italian films or maybe to watch that one um enjoy it and um grazie mille alla prossima volta ciao